Well, my next guest has written this book. It is called Calling All Boomers. Reflect now before the memory goes. It takes a look at the baby boomer generation from the Vietnam War to peace marches to love-ins and even those lovely leisure suits. And the author, Randall Howard, presents these events with his own personal remorse that he'll talk to us more about in just a moment. But first, Randall joins us this morning as part of our book author series. Good morning to you, Randall. Good to see you. Danielle, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. How did you come up with the title of the book? That was a long process. Uh, we had several serious titles, and believe it or not, even with the heavy tone of the, the nature of the book, uh, it's a humorous book, so we decided to go right for the humor. You know, one of the things that I found interesting uh, about the book is talking about the status quo, and, and, and you say that the country benefited from questioning the status quo uh, back in the day, and you also say that that same kind of enthusiasm seems to be lacking today. Why is that, and what was it about questioning the status quo back then that you felt was so powerful? Well, I feel we need to uh, challenge the status quo today on a lot of fronts. And what helped us in the days gone by, we didn't have all the influence of the mass media. Mass media was just coming out, but it was more of a, uh, a informational type of approach. We're, we were not inundated with the different viewpoints and approaches people are today. So we had more leisure, if you will, to challenge the concepts and challenge some of the things that were going on in the political arena. Here's the other thing that you say. You say the Civil War ended, uh, it occurred in the 1860s, but that it didn't end in that decade. You say it simply kind of disappeared, went underground, and then reappeared in the 1960s. H how are you making that comparison? I think it took about a century after the laws were on the books for people to come around and really see they had to change their approach and their mindset. Mm. Uh, it's easy enough to do something on the books, but that doesn't change what's in the hearts and minds of people. Mm -hmm. I just think it took that long for people to realize, along with some of the movements that we had in the 60s, to get the thing up on front stage and to be done with it. Fast forward now to, to where we are in this day and age, and, and you know, we've got technology, we've got the internet, we've got Facebook and Twitter, and all of the social media, and all of these things happening that some would argue kind of, rather than connect us, tend to kind of disconnect us from society and from interpersonal relationships. How does this relate or compare to what was happening back then? I guess what I'm asking is, do you find that the standard of living is better or worse than it was in the baby boomer generation? I think the standard of living has peaked. I think it's comparable to what it was for some of the folks who are employed and have reaped some of the benefits. But I think, uh, sadly, it's going to go downhill from here on out. And again, we didn't have all the social media. Not that that's bad, far from it. But you have to pick and choose. Back in our era, 20, 30, 40 years ago, we had very little to pick and choose from. Mm. Let's talk a little bit more about your era, and you know, I know that you know this is obviously something that is near and dear to your heart because you wrote about it in a book and you lived it. But you also talk about um, kind of looking back at it with a bit of remorse. What is that remorse? Well, the book has two main themes. One, to capture the history, and not just the events, but my feelings and attitudes during the history. And the remorse was, candidly, it took me a long time to get my religious house in order to come to Jesus. And throughout that time period, I reflect on those shortcomings as I've written the other key points in the book. How would that have changed how you were back in the 60s? That's, I have no idea. That's mm -hmm. the biggest question I ask myself on a daily basis. I just know how I'm different today from the past half a decade. I wonder how I would have been different from the last half a century forward. Mm. So what is the takeaway, Randy? What do you want people to walk away from calling all boomers with? Remember the key points of the lessons that we went through. Not the protests, not those types of things, but what we did the protest for, i.e. for civil rights that came up from that underground position. Let's take those lessons and apply it to the problems and issues we've got in this country today because we've got a lot of problems that need that type of approach. Mm. Well, you have written a wonderful book and thank you so much for coming by and sharing it with us. Did you ever wear a leisure suit? You can be honest, nobody's watching. Well, since I said in the book I did, <laughs> uh, yeah, powder blue. <laughs> Uh, thank goodness there was not social media like Facebook and so forth back in those days. <laughs> I, a powder blue leisure suit. Yeah, I can picture that now. There, I've gone on record and said it. 
leisure suits. All right, thank you so much, Randy, for coming by and sharing this with us on the show this morning. Danielle, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I think our producer, George, wore a leisure suit as well. He'll tell me about that later. But again, the book is called Calling All Boomers. Reflect now before the memory goes. For more information on Randy or the book, please visit the website. It is outskirtspress.com slash Reflections.